Have you ever thought about the end of infinity? Go get a lamp. Turn that thing on and off over the course of one minute at every halfway division. On at 30 seconds, off at 15, on again at 7.5, and so on. When the one minute is up, will the lamp be on or off? Think about it. Hopefully that didn't cook your brain, because we've got things to discuss. In philosophy, there is something called a super task. This is something that takes an infinite number of steps to complete. If that sentence sounds paradoxical, then you've caught the vibe of this video. How can you complete something that is infinite? Something that has no last step? How can something infinite end? What do you think? Is it possible for something to take a last step after infinity? There was this guy Zeno, way way back in 460 BCE Greece, who thought it was cool to think super duper hard about things. Some might say he was thinking a little too hard. Chill out Zeno, have a popsicle and hit the like button. Most people would call him a philosopher, but I like to call him extra. Zeno was part of a group of people that practiced the Eleatic school of thought. They believed that the senses are con men, just trying to take you for a ride whenever possible. They only trusted things that could be logically verified. They real life hated change, and by extension, movement. In today's world, we would have called them Star Wars fans. Zeno is famous for a number of paradoxes, but the one we are focusing on today is the one that usually involves Achilles and a tortoise. It has also been told using an arrow and a target. Achilles and the tortoise are in a race. The tortoise is given a head start and then continues running at the same speed. But every time that Achilles catches up to where the tortoise was when he started, the tortoise has moved forward. Achilles can never catch the tortoise because it has always moved forward from where it was by the time Achilles catches up to that point. Similar with the arrow. When an arrow flies to the target, it first has to travel half the distance to the target, then again half that distance, and half again, and so on in an infinite number of smaller and smaller increments so that it never actually hits the target. Let's hope that's not a metaphor for my life goals. Now I'm sure you are thinking to yourself, Bob, that's crazy whack. Of course the arrow hits the target. This is real life. That's just some goofy thought experiment some old dude baked up while he was baked. You are not alone in thinking this. This is where the paradox part comes in. While we know that arrows obviously hit targets, and Achilles can catch tortoises in real life, the math is also not wrong. The arrow must travel half again the distance for the duration of its flight. The increasingly tiny units of measurement never end. This paradox led Zeno to claim that motion is impossible, or motion is an illusion. Any movement, even just moving a finger a millimeter, has to travel some distance, and therefore is subject to the same paradox as the arrow and the target, effectively rendering your attempts to hit the subscribe button null and void. There have been plenty of attempts at disproving this thought experiment. For example, the reductio ad absurdum argument, which basically just says that taking things to extremes will lead to absurd conclusions. And the Gabriel's cake example, which is that if you cut a cake in half an infinite number of times, the pieces would stretch across the universe. Awesome in theory, not practical at all in practice. Unless you're talking about this cake, who can stretch across the universe. A whole lot of people have tried resolutions to this paradox over the years, some even going so far as to put forth that space and time don't exist in the first place. Was that Zeno's point the whole time? Or was he just trying to justify showing up late to work for the 17th time? A good question to ask would be, can you divide space and time forever? Max Planck, known for Planck's constant, thinks you can't. Planck was a German theoretical physicist in the early 20th century who defined the smallest unit of measurement in the known universe. This is the length of a proton. This is the Planck length. It is 100 quintillionth the size of a proton. So maybe there is a limit to that infinite number of halves? Will the arrow ever actually reach the target? Next time you're talking to a mathematician or a physicist, go ahead and ask them. See what they say. I'll tell you what absolutely does not have an end though. The uploading of new videos to YouTube. Check out my other videos for a good time learning new things in a goofy way. Curiosity be a good thing.